Welcome to this single African market program designed and dedicated to bringing you all the actions around the vision of the continent of Africa to integrate its market. And folks, uh, all across Africa, the wind is blowing everywhere about this whole uh, vision of the continent creating one market. Uh, this week has been a pretty busy week, uh, particularly at the continental level, because we had the AU summit held in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, uh, the African Union Commission, uh, where almost all the heads of states gathered. We'll be telling you a lot about what transpired over there because there's quite a lot of improvement as far as this vision uh, of creating one market at the continental level is concerned. Also, His Excellency, the Secretary General, uh, was in Cairo, the Arab Republic of Egypt, met with the Trade Minister in uh, Egypt, and we'll be telling you uh, a lot about this in the coming days as well. But staying in Egypt, though, the AFCFTA Secretariat, as well as the AfriExim Bank, has been able to sign uh, for the AFCFTA Adjustment Fund that's supposed to support countries that may find themselves wanting, as far as this AFCFTA is concerned, as soon as we begin implementation, countries that once they reduce their tariff to zero, they may find themselves in a very tight corner and all of that. So monies have been uh, dedicated uh, for that. It goes all the way into about 10 billion U.S. dollars. But at uh, the Egypt ceremony, though, the signing ceremony, $1 billion was dedicated to this particular agenda by the afri -Exim. Let's go there and take a look. The African Continental Free Trade Area, the AFCFD Secretariat, an African Export-Import Bank, afri -Exim Bank, signed an agreement on the management of the base fund of the AFCFT Adjustment Fund. The agreement was signed by Professor Benedicto Rama, President and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Afri Exim Bank, and His Excellency Wamkele Mene, Secretary General of the AFCFT Secretariat. In Egypt on Wednesday, February 9, 2021, the AFCFT Secretariat revealed that the fund will support African countries in the private sector to effectively participate in the new trading environment established under the AFCFTA. Here we want to make sure that the AFCFTA benefits not just my friends at uh, Standard Bank or MTN or, uh, or GLOW, any of our big successful corporations, but that it's, it, it, it actually benefits millions and millions of um, small medium enterprises the private sector on the continent, the, the members of uh, the African Business uh, Council that, that Dr. Asfor uh, uh, represents here today, that the benefits are real. And so I am deeply committed and I am um, entirely convinced that the partnership that we have is what our continent requires for us to fundamentally to fundamentally transform the structure of Africa's economy. The adjustment fund consists of a base fund, a general fund, and a credit fund. The base fund will consist of contributions from state parties, grants and technical assistance funds to address tariff revenue losses as tariffs are progressively eliminated. It will also support countries to implement various provisions of the AFCFD agreement, its protocols and annexes. It will also develop and uh, create a compensation facility. It will provide financing to state parties and ensure that they get technical assistances and capacity building um, programs. The general fund will mobilize concessional funding, while the credit fund will mobilize commercial funding to support both the public and private sectors enabling them to adjust and take advantage of the opportunities created by the AFCFTA. The fund is a necessary tool that will ensure that no country became worse off due to the AFCFTA implementation. It is meaningless if it brings prosperity to some countries and to some people and businesses, penury and difficulty to others. His Excellency Wam Kilimene, Secretary General of the AFCFT Secretariat, stated the Adjustment Fund is one of the tools designed to support the implementation of the AFCFT agreement and assist AFCFT state parties to deal with short-term tariff revenue losses. We have countries that we know today 
don't have any export competitiveness. We have countries today that we know in 10 years' time when they reduce their tariffs to zero, they will suffer. So who's going to step up to make sure that this particular country that reduces its tariff to zero, that the fiscal deficit that this causes, that it is actually accommodated? If it's not African Bank, who's going to do it? He added that the EFCFTA has an excellent tool to provide support to state parties in their private sectors through financing, technical assistance, grants and compensation fund. If this agreement benefits only South Africa, Kenya, Egypt, Nigeria, the countries on our continent that are already industrialized, that are already um, relatively competitive, we're not going to succeed in convincing Africans that actually trade does lead to development gains. So we will see a backlash in 20 years' time. The RCFT Adjustment Fund will therefore foster the equitable distribution of the gains from the Free Trade Agreement by, among others, protecting the most vulnerable from consequences of tariff revenue losses while building and preparing their risk sectors and positioning them to take advantage of the opportunities that the AFCFTA offers. The AFCFTA Secretariat and Afri Exim Bank were mandated by the African Union Summit of Heads of State and Government and the AFCFTA Council of Ministers responsible for trade to establish the AFCFTA Adjustment Fund to support AFCFTA state parties to adjust to the new liberalized and integrated trading environment established under the AFCFT agreement. At their 35th ordinary session in Addis Ababa, the African Union Heads of State directed the AFCFT Secretariat and African Bank to undertake all steps, including various private sector fund structures, for the full operationalization of the AFCFT Adjustment Fund and to avail the facility to state parties. As Africans, I believe we have to be extremely proud that we have now introduced these practical tools, practical tools to make sure that trade in Africa becomes a reality under the AFCFTA. And I don't think that we would have been able to do it as a secretariat without African Bank. We are most honored to have been given this challenge as fund managers of this fund. Professor Benedicto Rama, President and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Afri Exim Bank, said the adjustment fund which is taking shape comes on top of the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System PAPS. He added that setting the conditions will undoubtedly lead to a smooth implementation of the EFCFDA. Today's signature event of the Fund Management Agreement of the base fund is a direct response to an assurance to the African Union heads of state that all parties, including the FCFT Secretariat, Affairs in Bank, the AU Commission, remain focused to honoring our commitment to them and the African continent. In the protections it will bring to countries most dependent on tariff revenues and the inclusivity it will precipitate as we implement the AFCFTA. So I keep reminding you, we've entered into the year 2022 and there's quite a lot of actions. If you are following from 13th of January, we launched the Pan-African Payment and Settlement Systems. We also uh, unveil the IATF 2020. Three. Uh, from there, the Council of Trade Ministers have also met. They've been able to agree on 88% of the rules of origin. The AU summit has been held. The heads of state are also, uh, you know, putting a lot of energy in this whole vision. And then now we have had the signing agreement between the AFCFT Secretariat as well as the Afri Exim Bank uh, giving this adjustment fund to countries that would be in need of them. A lot of things are happening, folks. And the trade experts, trade advocates, pundits who are following this whole journey and following this whole conversation, particularly uh, here in Ghana, the commercial capital of Africa, they have begun applauding 
all the things, all the actions that are being taken by the authorities, the implementing authorities so far, as far as the AFCFT is concerned. First, they have applauded big time the launch of the Pan-African Payment and Settlement Systems and the commencement of it. For any trading system, a key element of trade is payment for the goods and services that are supplied. And in Africa, that's one of the biggest challenges we've had over the years. I know we've had different uh, trading blocks, ECOWAS, Comesa, and all that. Within the ECOWAS region, we have the Francophones who are using SEFA, we have the Anglophones who are using different currencies. Much as we are still able to trade, the, the inefficient payment system impacts on the trading we do. And therefore, a key element of the CFTA, when it was being designed, was to have, eventually have a payment system that is smoother, that makes it easy for people to trade. And therefore, the introduction of the PAPs, I believe it's, it's a very efficient way, it's going to be an efficient way of promoting trade within Africa. The recently launched Pan-African Payment and Settlement System is going, to very, is going to help accelerate economic development and uh, inter-payments across Africa by allowing the opportunity for traders, that is the buyers and the sellers, to trade in their local currencies. So no need to worry about either opening uh, a foreign currency account in your, local, in your local bank and then deal with multiple uh, currency conversions which would reduce the cost and uh, in increase unnecessarily financial transaction costs. For me, one of the underlying constraints to trade in Africa has been, first of all, the multiplicity of currencies and then secondly, of course, the challenges with cross-border payments, uh, which is the inability to trade in our own currencies but to use uh, the dollar uh, in particular. So this is the solution that the Pan-African Payment Systems brings. A payment system solves a lot of problems for uh, those involved in international trade. And uh, it reduces the transaction costs, it reduces uh, forex losses. And then, uh, but a key thing is, is getting access to the various markets within the continental free trade area. And, uh, the next step is for us to participate in most of the international trade fairs to get the right contacts. PAPS has been uh, a welcoming news and it's a relief for the payment settlement, payment transfers among African traders, investors. In fact, it's going to put a lot of competition even between our payment system and the likes of MasterCard and Visa because it's going to go beyond just cross-border payments. It's going to go beyond just exchanges. It is setting up the pace for one African single currency. It's not just even for payments of goods and services, but even transactions has to do with payment for clearing of goods, you know, across countries. You can do that without necessarily having to physically travel. So a lot of the tools that are supposed to drive this whole vision of creating one continental market is getting a plus, uh, as you may have heard from the pundits there in that particular piece that we listened to. And uh, the implementing authorities, eh, you know, even though the applause and all of that are coming through, they are not resting on their laurels. There's going to be a lot that they will do. We are in 2022, and the IAT of 2023 is just around the corner. It's coming up in Abidjan, La Côte d'Ivoire. And the managing director of the Intra-Africa Trade Fair, Avri Exim's uh, Intra-Africa Trade Fair, says, look, that is going to be a rallying point. The IATF, the Intra-Africa Trade Fair, is going to be a rallying point for all businesses to come together and begin to negotiate. So more or less, we are creating that single market all around the IATF. She believes that with all the tools that are being put together, that are being launched here and there, the adjustment funds, the PAPs, and all of that, we need a rallying point, which is the IATF. And with that also on board and fully functioning, we are good to go as a continent. Madam Intra Africa Trade, uh, 2021, you brought the entire continent yes. together yes. in Durban, South Africa. Yes. Uh, you have highlighted quite a number of benefits that yes. we've gotten out of that. But to what extent does this IETF propel the AFCFT agenda across the continent? Well, you know, the thing about the AFCFT is that it's a trade agreement. Yes. Its success is will be hinged on implementation. Yes. 
how do we implement it? How do we tacticalize the levers for in traffic and trade to grow? The trade fair in itself is a platform to give to give um, African businesses, policymakers, a snapshot of of this market, of this one huge market of 1.2 billion people. Going forward, it appears that it, 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 it the continent would embrace this so much that one day we may have almost every business person wanting to be at the IATF. Yes. Is the IATF ready to embrace this so that you don't get to a point where you'll be overwhelmed by people who are willing and ready to be part of this? We have introduced initiatives that will ensure SMEs who are indirect exporters can be supported in the context of intra-Africa trade. But obviously, we will see how um, the platform grows. You know, remember also that it's a hybrid event as well. Um, we'll see the progression of, of, of the numbers. Um, but as today, we, we think that um, uh, we have a good number of exhibitors and a lot of the SMEs, yeah. if you know what I very, mean. Very, very important. Are also coming under the auspices of their countries. That's why we have a country pavilion you know, and these are the countries that the governments and agencies that support the SMEs to participate, you know, in the trade fair. Okay. One year since implementation of the AFCFTA. How do you see it? Where are we getting? Do you see the continent embracing this and enthusiastic about this whole agenda? Well, first of all, the political enthusiasm is, is huge. The leadership um, um, is focused on seeing that it succeeds. Even, as you know, through the, the process of ratification, uh, the engagement with the, our leaders at the AU summits. But importantly, when you talk about embrace, the IATF 2021, you know, was for me personally an insight into the spirit of the African mind and the eagerness to see that Africa takes its destiny in hands and that this trade AFCFTA succeeds. It was all about building bridges towards a successful AFCFTA. So we did, you know, the interventions were those that were so practical to ensure that um, uh, businesses take advantage of the AFCFTA. I, I think um, that Africa is at, the is at the cusp of something great. That's how I thought about the trade fair. That it was, we were onto something, we were onto greatness, the spirit, the energy, the quality of interventions, the content of the program, and you know the deals that were closed, as you can see from the statistics that we have shared, show that um, we are onto something um, that is transformative. Yeah. The FCFT has come to stay. There is no going back. I know there may be some cynicism out there about whether it is implementation, but we're going to get there. There is no the partnership that we ourselves enjoy, the FCFT, and the Apex Bank, and all the, you know. Um, um, interested development agencies, Pan-African agencies, suggest that, you know, we, we are, there's no going back. It is here to stay. And that when we come to Agenda 2063, you know, history will bear witness to that. So pandits are seeing bright light at the end of the tunnel. The implementing authorities are seeing even brighter light at the end of the tunnel. What are you waiting for? You have to begin to understand this whole journey. You have to begin to follow this whole journey, understand it properly and see how best, read around it and see how best you can take advantage of this AFC, FTA, uh, even as a small and medium enterprise and benefit from it. So as we talk about small and medium enterprises benefiting from the IATF, at the unveiling of the IATF 2023, a gentleman made a request asking the team with the IATF to ensure that esports is taken seriously because he believes that it's one area that is taking the attention of the youth. Games here and there, you know, uh, phone games, internet games, and all of that, that these young folks are beginning to enjoy on their mobile apps and on their consoles and all of that. It's taking a big stage as far as business, uh, small businesses on the continent is concerned, and he wants the Intra-Africa Trade Fair to consider that. Listen to him. When we talk about electronic sports, many people think that it's just competitive play of video games, but it has a lot of opportunities. 
whereby it is not those that are taught in the classrooms, but people discovering technologies that are available to them. I want to say that if intra-African trade fair 2023 will look to esports for opportunities to drive the youth agenda in Africa, it would be a worthwhile. So hearing the gentleman talk about uh, video games and esports and all of that, this week, as uh, a single African market, we decided to focus on some gentlemen who are innovating and creating video games with African content. Now, they claim that most of the video games that we have uh, on the uh, various applications are all from the Western countries, and they have decided to create African content authentic African content video games for our young people to enjoy and they want to be able to take their video games beyond even the shores of Ghana, beyond the shores of West Africa and take over the African market. Listen to them. We came together and decided to work solely on our ambition, that's game development. We started with our first project, a side-scroller adventure game called Osa, The Ghost Awaken. But due to some one or two circumstances, we put it on hold and focus on our game that we launched recently, that was Kauri's Adventure. Kauri's Adventure was born out of the frustration we were going through during, during our, our Osa, The Ghost Awaken game. Upon everything that goes on as an African, you will still have the chance to fight against it and achieve what you want to achieve with determination. So that's where we started this whole story about a young guy in a fictional setting called Jita. And he was called by the gods to succeed the throne. And he decided not to succeed the throne because he wants his freedom. Just like how we, the creatives in Ghana and in other parts of Africa wants our freedom to create and do what we love without any restrictions and without any hindrance. You've been chosen to succeed the truth. Wow, that's cool. Uh, I'm not interested. How dare you make mockery of the great ones? So you, with Karis Adventure, you embark as a young guy who the gods they are punish him to serve as a calabash collecting Karis, but in the end, he comes out victorious. We try our possible best to portray our African beliefs and African culture to the world in the best possible manner we can. And we try doing this through our music, the music we do in the game. We make sure that we take the things that outsiders think ill or negative about Africa, polish it, makes it appealing to the youth to appreciate their culture and appreciate what Africa has to go to do with the world. The uniqueness of the, some of the elements in it, the sound, the characters in it, and the story behind it. Not just from Africa, but the quality stuff coming from Africa. One thing that all the reviewers tell us is they never thought something like this would come out from Ghana or Africa because of the standard of quality. And the influence and the impact we want to have on Africans is everywhere you find yourself, you should embrace your culture. Stand out. People are yearning for African stuff. We are here to produce purely authentic African video games, either on mobile or on console and PC. I have to congratulate Africans for bringing after to seamlessly integrate all Africans and our trade platform and how we do business. It is time for us to work together, not just by word of mouth, but in action. And there are payment system they introduced called PAPS. It's kind of interesting and mind blowing when I was, I was told of, uh, because last year we were doing some collaborative work with our fellow brothers in Nigeria, and we were sending them uh, remuneration money and we are kind of being deducted. It's something like the PAPS is a good initiative, whereby you just send money, you don't need to even add any extra. What you send is what the person gets. 
well done uh, Africans for bringing AFTA. I think with AFTA, it will help us to move easily and collaborate with other African creatives. AFTA has come to stay and we are very grateful for it. It falls in line with our company ambition to be one of the top studios, game studios in Africa. And we are looking forward to open branches in other African uh, countries in the continent to collaborate with other African creatives, other African studios to do trade and services seamlessly. And we are very grateful for after. What is going on here? How dare you make mockery of the great ones? You will be punished for your disobedience. Ha 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 ha. I care less about you guys. I'm sure I'm dreaming. Wake up! So we wish the very creative, innovative young men at Baula Studio uh, well. They are doing remarkably well with those African content, authentic African content video games that our young people can also enjoy, enjoy something of their own using cowries, using the African gods here and there and all of that. Uh, is very healthy and we would also pray that the implementing authorities of the AFC, FTA, the IATF uh, organizers will begin to consider these things as they are calling for uh, their consideration at the Intra-Africa Trade Fair. We now bring you the weather report for all African cities as well as their fly schedules that are leaving the commercial capital of Africa, that's Accra, uh, to the rest of the African cities. So if you have to catch a flight from Accra to Cairo or to Addis Ababa, the schedules are coming up next on your screens. Also next on your screens are the Forex rates for African market, the AFC FTA party status, and I should remind you that we now have uh, 41 countries uh, out of the 55 countries on the continent who have deposited their instruments of ratification. I will continue to encourage you to tag along this program because it is the only program across the entire continent of Africa that brings you every step of the way, every move out of every action, what it is that you need to know as far as this journey to create one market is concerned. And if you truly want to be impacted by the AFC FTA positively, it is a platform that you need to follow and you will get every bit of actions that have been uh, taken around this old vision. Thank you for watching the program and we will see you same time next week. <laughs> Yeah.
Is the five cents from Sanaa?